Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone, to God in the Midst radio broadcast, The Morning Coffee Sunday School Lesson for September 16, 2008. And I am Pastor McCoy. I am the guest host and teacher for this morning. Uh, Pastor Paul, I called him earlier this week and I said, I, I think it's time for you to take a break. And uh, he took a break this weekend. And um, I'm just going to teach the Sunday school lesson as the Lord leads me and just enjoy fellowshipping over Facebook, over the conference call. For those that are listening on Facebook, we welcome you to our broadcast. For those who are listening uh, on the conference call, we welcome you to our broadcast. Now, what we do here is that at the end of the video on Facebook, we then go into an overtime session on the conference call. So if you want to join us in overtime, the number is 619-639-4733. Again, the number is 619-639-4733. And um, we, we pray and we discuss the lesson. So that's what we do on the overtime period. But I tell you, it is so good to be back on Get em Radio. Oh, hallelujah. I think my last broadcast on Get em was back in June, but I'm just so happy to be back. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. Lord, you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We lift you up this day and give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Lord, we thank you for yesterday. All that you did on yesterday, oh, Lord, we still walking around in just amazement. It's as if it was a dream. So, Lord, we just thank you for yesterday. And now, Lord, we trust you for today and tomorrow. Just have your way, dear Heavenly Father. You are the potter and we are the clay. Mold us and shape us according to your will and your way. Oh, Lord, we just thank you right now. And Lord, when life storms come, like they did at, uh, uh, with Hurricane uh, Florence and the typhoon over in the Philippines, when, when danger comes like that, Lord, we just thank you that we got a solid rock. And we can say on Christ, the solid rock we stand, all of the ground is like sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Thank you for Jesus who hung, bled, and died on the cross for our sins and to forgive us of our sins and the sins of this world. Thank you, Lord, that you raised him up. Then after his resurrection, you he ascended up into heaven to sit at your right hand, interceding on our behalf. And Lord, we thank you. He didn't leave us helpless or hopeless. He sent back his Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our lesson today is a continuation. We've been looking at Genesis for, for, for uh, this quarter. And today we're going to deal with the sixth day. We're going to deal with man, the first man. So if you will, turn your Bibles now. Turn your Bibles to Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 26 and read to verse 31. And then we're going to go Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. And so I'm reading out of a um, see a NIV translation. Uh, starting at verse 26, and it reads, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, 
over the livestock and all the wild animals, over all the creation that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, increase in numbers, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I'll give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be for your food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw that he uh, God saw that he had made, God saw all, excuse me, God saw all that he has made, and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Now turn with me to Genesis chapter two, uh, verses four through seven. Genesis chapter two, verses four through seven. This is the account of heavens, of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, no scrubs had yet appeared on the earth and no plants had yet sprung up. For the Lord had not sent rain on the earth, nor was no one to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord formed a man from the dusk of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, that's our scripture reading for this morning. And uh, when we look at this lesson today, we, 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 we're looking at uh, verse 27 and Genesis chapter one as being our primary memory verse. It says, so God created man in his own image and in the image God created him God created him, yes, hallelujah. Male and female created he them. Oh, yes. Our key concept, our key concept is on the sixth day of creation, God made man and woman. The key to this message, the keys to this message, God, God created man and woman in his own image. Uh, number two, all the that God created was very, very, very good. Oh, yes. And God, number three, gave mankind the job to watch over the whole world. Oh, hallelujah. So as we break this lesson down and, and, and to its uh, various theological standpoints, we're going to have some lesson facts that we want to grab a hold to and that is to identify aspects of the image of God in humanity. Biblical principles that we want to really dig into is to show humanity's value and special status of being made in God's image. In our daily application, we want to treat all with respect and dignity as made because all are made in God's image. We're going to break this lesson down in two parts. Real simple outline. The plan for man and the life for the first man. Here you go again. The plan for man and the life for the first man. 
So this lesson, this lesson, oh man, every time I look at Genesis, I mean, when you, you got to go back and look at Genesis, because that's the first stuff. That's the first things. And, and you got to really go back and just read it. And every time you read Genesis, you will find in those first three chapters how everything started. How 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 God said, let there be and there was. He he had that that divine uh uh, uh um mm, that divine speech that when he spoke a thing it came into existence. Oh hallelujah. God is good like that, y'all. He he could just say a thing and, and it'll come into place. And then after that, he he he, he created everything, he then created man. And when he created man, he created man in his own image. So as we look at this lesson this morning, we want to see what does it mean to be created in God's own image? What does that involve? What does that entail? If we look at ourselves in the mirror, do we see? the image of God that he created. Well, it goes deeper <laughs> than what you see in the mirror. Because what God created man, when he, when, he, when he formed us from the dusk of the ground, it says he then breathed life in us. So our outside form is just the tip of the iceberg. See if you don't understand what I'm saying. An iceberg, an iceberg, you'll see it in the water, you'll just see the tip. But down deep, because the iceberg goes real deep, under the surface of the water, and you'll never see it. But when we talk about God creating man, what you see on the outside is just the tip of the iceberg. Because what he put us put in the inside of us. When he breathed that breath of life, oh hallelujah, it was awesome. So, 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 so that's that's the background of this lesson. And, and we want to dig into these scriptures. So we're gonna start off right now with uh uh, uh Genesis chapter uh, one, verses 26 through 31. I've already read it, but we're gonna we're gonna step through it, if you will. Yeah, we're gonna step through it. So listen to the first verses we as we step through it, and we're dealing with the plan for man, the plan for man. See, man is different than all the other creatures God created. He's different. Everybody say, other advisors in church, everybody say different, different, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's different. He's different. Listen, look, look, listen to verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness let him have dominion over the fish of the and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and we're gonna stop right there for just a minute oh he goes on seven verse i can go to seven verse let me know the next part and all the earth and every creeping thing on the earth when you go back and look god when he created everything else, he just spoke it. But when he created man, he had a design in his mind. And he wanted man to be like him. Now notice, God is not uh, 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 someone who's bad with English. <laughs> he didn't say, let me make man. He said, let us. And, and, and you have to, you have to ask your question, who is us? Well, that's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's the us. See, so so when he says, let us create man, he's saying, I'm gonna create man like I am, like a father. I'm going to create man like I am, like the Son. I'm going to create man like I am, like the Holy Spirit. 
we'll come back to that. And so, so when we when we trek over to to uh, uh, um, chapter four, I mean chapter two, and 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 uh, it's uh, verse verse four uh, over there. This is a, a reaccount of the creation. And that's when he says over at uh, verse seven of chapter two, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living creature. A living creature. There were other living things on the ground, creeping and all of that, birds in the air, seas in, 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 in the sea, uh, I mean, fish in the sea and, 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 and all these other creeping things. They were alive, but God didn't breathe breath into them. He only breathed breath into man. God didn't form them. He only spoke them into existence. So God reached down into this earth that he created, grabbed up a ball of dirt, looked at that dirt and said, I'm going to form man in my own image. I'm going to mold him. I'm going to shape him. I'm going to make him like he is. I'm going to give him two eyes so that he could see. I'm going to give him two ears so that he could hear. I'm going to give him a nose so he could smell and breathe. I'm going to give him a mouth that he might talk. And then God said, okay, now as I'm doing this, I'm going to give him a nervous system so he'll be able to feel. And these are all of our outward senses. We smell, we feel, and then we can talk. And so here it is. That's what God created. And then he breathed the Ruah. That's the Holy Spirit. He breathed the Ruah into us. And that gave us his spirit. That gave us a soul. Because man is not his body, mind, and soul. And, and, and then when you receive the body, mind, and soul that God gave you, then he breathes life into you. He's now putting his Holy Spirit into your soul. Everybody who God created has a measure of faith. Everybody that God created has a measure of God in them. The question is, what you gonna do with it? And God gave man a job. And that job, he says, look, 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 I'm giving you dominion. What is dominion? Dominion means I'm making you the dominant one. I'm giving you all authority in heaven and earth to rule this which I have created. That was man's job. That was man's responsibility. That's, that was his that was his job. So God created man in his own image. And, 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 and that image is the representative of his person and, 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 and his likeness. And now, now when man understands that, man with should and will strive to be like God. Now, I got to tell you something. Before I go any further, let me just stop parenthetically and say this. Um, there's a right way to be like God and there's a wrong way. Some people want to be God and God all by themselves. That's wrong. Some folks want to, to, to upserve God's authority and that's wrong. We must realize that that's how the devil himself got kicked out of heaven is because he wanted to replace God. That's utter foolishness. And so I say to each one of us, we, we want to be like God, but we ain't trying to replace God because the God I serve, oh, hallelujah, is Placeable. The God I serve is, is a God that is just so awesome and wonderful and glorious and mighty that I don't want no other God. 
So you learn that when he's talking about being, being in God's image, he wants you to have the characteristics of God, not just how you look on the outside, but he wants to put some stuff in you. He wants you to have the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, faith, gentleness, kindness, uh, meekness, and self-control because that's what God got. He got peace, peace that passes all understanding and he'll give it to anyone who wants it. That's, that's who it is. Now, now, now catch this now, catch this now. He, he, he said he created man in his own image and then he gave man dominion. Then we get down to verse 27. He says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created male and female. He created them. Now, here's the deal. When he created man, he created both man, male, and female. And you say, come on, now, preacher, that, that don't sound right. Wait, you say he created man. And he created them both male and female. See, when we start talking about someone's inner man, we're not talking about that person's, uh, 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 what's the word I want to use? We're not talking about that person's uh, uh, sexuality. That, that everybody, male and female, have an inner man. But when God created man, he created them both male and female. Well, how did he do that? I don't know. Why did he do that? I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I know y'all miss Pastor Mark on that one. Because see, see, that's what's wrong with some of us. We ask so many different questions, and it's okay to question God. But somewhere along the line, you just got to throw up your hands and say, I trust you, Lord. I don't understand it all. I don't know it all. Because if I did, I'd be you. But you be you. And let me be me. And help me to understand. Lord, I got faith. Now, help my unbelief. Yeah, that's how we ought to be. And so when he created male and female, that brings us to the point later, you know, we, I don't know how much we're going to talk about this in Sunday school, but um, then he came back and he, you know, he said, okay, um, man looking all by himself, um, hmm, I'm going to give him a help name. And he, and he took one of man's ribs and created Whoa, man. Whoa, man. And when Eve was created and Adam saw, <laughs> because our wives are part of us and we are part of them. And we are part of them from the creation if you want to find your wife, brother man, you need to look for bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. Because, see, that's your soul mate. I thank God that he gave me my soul mate, oh, almost 40 years ago. Oh, hallelujah, that woman, Lady Sandra. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> She is my chocolate candy bar. <laughs> just as sweet as she can be. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just stop. I gotta stop. Let me go on with the word. I got a, I got another another five minutes to kind of finish up this lesson because I want to have a discussion afterward. And so here it is. Part of the likeness of man that makes him different than any other creature is that man has the ability to reason. He has the ability to think and make choices. Other animals, they can think and they can make choices, but their reasoning is not on the level of man. And so what is man's purpose in all of this? 
because he has to subdue and overcome and take control and conquer. I'm going to say that again. He has to subdue. He has to overcome, take control and conquer. That's what dominion means. And so in verse 28, he says, then God blessed them. He blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on this earth. God says, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the earth, on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, and to, to you it shall be for food. Also, to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every herb for food and it was so god said look man i'm blessing you oh that's why i can walk around and say i'm blessed i'm blessed, I'm blessed. oh hallelujah i'm blessed because god blessed me i ain't talking about man's blessing i'm talking about god's blessing you can say i'm blessed because god bless you and he told us to be fruitful and multiply, increase in numbers. Do what you are supposed to do as a man, as a woman on this earth, as men and women on this earth, is to take dominion, to take dominion and do what the Lord wants us to do. Oh, hallelujah. It is awesome. When you start thinking about God gave us rulership, dominion, and then he gave us the power to do it. And in the midst of that, he gave us all the provisions that we need. Every plant, every fruit, he gave us that. And he gave us the animals some people say, well, no, that ain't what it says. He ain't give us the animals to eat. The animals supposed to eat eat the vest eat the vegetables and all we supposed to be is vegetarian. All right. I'm not gonna argue with you, but the God I serve is awesome. And God, then after he gave man this commandment and gave him a blessing and gave him provisions and the power to perform that which he has purposed for him to do, he then said in verse 31, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God affirmed his creation. If you need affirmation in your life, if you need somebody to encourage you, go to God because he'll tell you, you're blessed. I bless you. Bless you coming in and I bless you coming out. You're blessed. You're not the, the, you're the head and not the tail. I bless you. And I, I think what I created and blessed is good it was perfect it was beautiful it was complete creation was over god did what he said he was going to do it happened and now we are here as man oh hallelujah somebody ought to give god praise because we are fearfully and wonderfully made he has fearfully wonderfully made us in his own image and when he sees us he says it is good oh hallelujah thank you lord praise your name that what you created you said is good let me make it plain god don't make no mess he never have and he never will oh hallelujah and he knows the plans that he has for us 
plans to prosper us, to give us hope and an expected end. No evil. He's an awesome God. And so now, our last verses is Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. And it says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herbs of the field had grown. For, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. This is another recap of creation. And this recap of creation, this is a playback. There was no water and there was no man. And then God caused the water to cover the whole ground. See, that was no thing called rain until chapter six, when God let it rain, let it rain. Prior to that, God just watered all the vegetation with a mist that comes upon the ground. Today, we call that dew, but it was everywhere. So, we serve a God that allows the presence of water to come into our lives. What is water? Water is that thing that nourishes us when we're thirsty. Water is that thing that helps everything grow. We talk about the word of God as being the water. And so it is with man. If you're not drinking the waters of God, his word, you are malnutrition. You are not getting the proper nourishment. You need the word in you. See, because John says it like this, in the beginning, the word and the word was with God and the word was God and not anything was created that was not created by him. And it's then he goes on and says, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And another spot, Jesus told the woman at the well, if you drink of this water, you are never thirsty again. So when God created everything, he made sure that the water of his word was there. And then he created that man to receive that water and to live for all eternity by faith in God's amazing grace. I'm going to end the lesson right there. It is 934 where I am. It's a 30 minute lesson. We're going to go on the conference call in a minute. And, um, if you want to join us to discuss this lesson and get some more insight, make some comments, have prayer with us, you are more than welcome to join us. That number is 619-639-4733. And so as we get ready to end this lesson, the thought to remember for this lesson today, that that, that thing that I want to stick in your head for the rest of your life is that God created you and it is God that will keep you. Oh, hallelujah. It is God that created you and God will keep you. Let us pray.
dear God in heaven. Thank you for creating this world for us to enjoy. Help us every day, Lord, to show the world that we live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for those who are listening and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I, I want to close with a prayer with you. I call it the prayer of salvation. Others call it the sinner's prayer. But I want to close with that prayer. It's based on Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that says that whosoever, or verse 13 says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then verse 9 of Romans chapter 10 says that, um, that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you will, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, God, I come to you confessing with my mouth and believe it in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. Lord, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and come into my heart and abide with me, live with me, help me for the rest of my days. Keep me and take care of me. And Lord, send your Holy Spirit to give me the strength every moment of my life to live to your glory. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord for making me whole. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, Facebook, we're going over to overtime. God bless you. God keep you. And remember, you're blessed and always be a blessing to others. Bye now, Facebook.